Hello and welcome. This channel is part of the fight back against junk science that's now pervading the internet. If you want to know whether some of the scientific claims you see in blogs and videos are true, a study on rats finds a link between cell phones and cancer, and you're interested in knowing what the real science says, this might be the channel for you. My name's Peter Hadfield. I'm a former geologist who became a professional science journalist back in the days before the internet, so I do my research the old-fashioned way. I track down where the bloggers and video makers got their information from and then show how they changed, misunderstood or even deliberately misrepresented it. But why don't I show you an example? Here's a snippet debunking an episode of the TV program Conspiracy Theory. The top secret government project that can destroy the world. Here's Jesse Ventura investigating Harp's triggering of the Boxing Day tsunami that hit large parts of Southeast Asia. This photo was actually taken just before the big tsunami hit the coast of Indonesia. And what so how do we know it was taken just before the tsunami? It meant taking the Conspiracy Show logo off the bottom of the photo and doing a search for it on Google Images. And presto, I discovered exactly the same photo on sale for $24 at Dave Miller's Posters Wanted website. Not only is there no indication that this commercial picture was taken before or even in the same decade as the tsunami, it's not even in the same hemisphere. It is advertised as the Aurora Australis, the Southern Lights. And after busting the myths in TV shows, blogs, videos and newspapers, I show what the real science says. Not my theories, that would make me no better than all the MOOC experts on the internet. I'm talking about the science that's taught to the next generation of scientists, that comes from the scientific literature. And I promise it's not hard to follow, even if you dropped out of science in high school. You'll be able to see right through some of the tricks the media try to pull. Here are three more clips from my videos. Because if GMOs really are the cause of cancer, brain damage, metabolic collapse and... What else? Digestive disorders, organ damage, tumours, allergies. Yeah, right. Then that ought to show up among the billions of people and animals who've been consuming it over the last 20 to 30 years, compared to those who haven't. The studies that have been done have all drawn a blank. So let's try the opposite tack. This is a dinosaur bone, by the way. It's been replaced by minerals. Whoa, hold on before you get to the butt. Did I just hear you say it's been replaced by minerals? So, in fact, there's no carbon in it. And this would seem to be rather a crucial requirement if you want to perform carbon dating. If I took this to a laboratory and said, would you please date this, they would say, oh, well, we'd have to use something other than carbon dating because this is too old for carbon dating. No, Kent, they wouldn't. They'd say, Oi, Havin, we can't carbon date this. There's no f***ing carbon in it. Let's take the graph on the left first, which narrator Warren Meyer says comes from Moberg's 2005 study. If we look at Moberg's original, we can see that the instrumental temperature data showing late 20th century warming has been erased. Worse than that, Moberg's proxy data, that he says in the caption goes back as far as 1979, is extended to make it look as though it goes up to the year 2000. The scale's been changed. You can see that more clearly when I match the two graphs up. Notice how the doctored graph ends short of the recent period of warming, but the date has been changed to 2000. So in the doctored graph, 30 years of warming is simply airbrushed out, and the scale... And if you dispute something I've said, hey, no problem. I list all my sources in the video descriptions, whether it's the source of whatever I'm critiquing, so you can be sure I haven't set up a straw man, or whether it's a list of my scientific sources so that you can check I'm reporting the science accurately. And if anyone does find a mistake, however small, I'm always happy to issue a correction. Citing sources and correcting errors on YouTube? Yes, it can be done. And if you can't find any errors, well, just let off steam by telling me I'm a dickhead. You'll feel so much better. One other thing I try to do is show people how to be sceptical and check stuff they read on the internet, because a lot of people ask me how it's done. From how to tell the difference between a reputable scientific journal and a junk one, to the basics of tracking down sources. Here are a few examples. That's close to a 10% difference, which is not much. So, as always, we have to ask, where do Lomborg's figures come from? PragerU doesn't tell us. So I emailed Lomborg to ask him. His office told me his source is this paper by Hawkins et al. 
And right up top, the abstract shows not a 10% difference, as Lomborg says, but a range from 10% to 24%. The authors later issued a corrigendum, and that figure was corrected to between 17 and 30%, which is even further from Lomborg's claim. The first thing that comes to mind is that Lomborg cherry-picked the figures, but I can't say that without reading the study. OK, I've read the study, and yep, he cherry-picked the figures. The mail doesn't even cite its source, but it does give a keyword and a date, so it's not hard to search Google Scholar for the word Roy Namur and find the relevant paper. And it's quickly apparent that it doesn't say the Maldives will become uninhabitable by 2030 at all, so here are a few warning signs. First, be wary of anyone who feels the need to dress up in order to impart scientific information, especially when his lab coat looks like it's never been used. I'm part of a group of doctors. Second, be wary of someone who says he's part of a group of doctors when in fact he's a chiropractor. That are out bringing the truth about genetically modified foods. Thirdly, never trust anyone who tells you he's speaking the truth. Science depends on evidence that's consistent with a hypothesis. And the harmful effects that it has on our health. And fourth, check the information. The problem seems to be that Tony's only reading the abstract of the study on a NASA website. He needs to read the paper itself, where the source of his misunderstanding is revealed. In the paper itself, the authors show that ozone depletion and greenhouse gases exacerbated a phenomenon called the Southern Annular Mode, or the SAM. Their conclusion was that recent cooling over the Antarctic continental interior has likely been caused by both ozone depletion and greenhouse gas increases. And having worked in television for three decades, I teach some of the media tricks that less reputable video makers use to pull the wool over your eyes, so that you can watch out for them. Well, then how did it get created? Well, um... By a very slow process. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how it started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. Four very obvious cuts in both the audio and the video in the space of just a few seconds, taking us from a question about the origin of the universe to an answer about the origin of life. Finally, it doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum anyone's on or which god you believe in. Science doesn't distinguish and neither do I. Evolution is the way things change over time, over a billion years or more. In his film An Inconvenient Truth, Al Gore used a graph like this to show a correlation between carbon dioxide levels and increased temperatures. But he obscured the fact that the carbon dioxide increases lag the temperature increases. I'm happy to debunk any myth, whoever makes it, because the laws of science are politically neutral. Now, I don't ask for donations, and my channel isn't monetized. If you really feel bad about watching these well-researched videos for free, or if you don't want to accept scientific conclusions and think I'm a human deformation, you can donate to a charity that I really like, and that I hope we can all support, detailed in the more recent video descriptions. Thanks for watching.